Hi, my name is Kevin and I collect old irons. A long time ago, video number four, we talked about these slug irons and we, working from my own collection of mostly American slug irons, we explored that topic, saw a little bit of the later rather common European irons in my collection, but you might remember then that I commented that there were also many very much earlier European slug irons, masterpieces, handcrafted, individually, very rare, and very expensive. I did not have any of those to show, but here I am at a preview for the first Buck Carson's auction in Pittsburgh, and I'm surrounded by 500 irons that will be on auction tomorrow. They're all laid out here. Many of the very, very rare, most valuable irons that you will ever see. And I have chosen 15 of those European slug irons from the 17th, 18th centuries that we will look at here. We will talk about the values given in the auction book and we'll mention the values that these things will actually sell for. Now, just so you know, I will not be bidding on any of these irons. These are out of my collecting range and, and out of my budget, to be honest with you. Many of these irons have values in the several thousands to maybe 10,000 or well more than that. But we're gonna get a chance to look at these now and enjoy them before they are dispersed wherever they might go. So to begin, this is an auction being held by Hartzels. They do one or more iron-based auctions each year. This auction has been published about six months ahead of time in this book. And Hartzels is very good about posting these things online. You can bid on them online. You might remember that we participated in one of the uh, online auctions in an earlier video. I thank John Hartzell of Hartzell's Auction for uh, allowing me to do this here. And I'd like to compliment Hartzell's Auctions as well because they keep the auction listings online for years. And that means that that is a research tool. It's a research tool I've used in getting pictures for some of the previous videos. And because these are available for you to look at online, I will include the lot numbers if you want to see these in some other angles and photos. And you also can see the context of other irons at this auction, which perhaps I am not showing here individually, and all the other types here as well. We're going to look at 15 irons all together. I'll sort these out by country, starting with the Germanic irons. And then within each country, I'll do them from oldest to more recent in that chronological order. And we will start with the Germanic irons. About half of the irons I'll be showing are Germanic. Now, I didn't say Germany because we need to be reminded that Germany as a country did not exist until the 1870s. And previous to that, there were many uh, German city-states, each of them with their own uh, royal families and, and regal structures and so forth. And that apparently has resulted in quite a diversity of irons of that period that has survived. And we'll start with this one. Uh, this iron, as many of the irons of the uh, 1700s into the early 1900s, is dated. This one's dated 1693. It also has some initials, FWM. Uh, very interesting iron. The pieces are all wrought, and that's what is very typical of irons from the 16 to 1700s. Um, there's original handle. It also has a handmade piece on the back. There would have been a similar piece on the front that's no longer here. Uh, the box is all built together by pieces, and then there has been a, a cutout brass piece that's been inserted on the top, which is in which is inscribed the years and the dates. And here, a very simple swing gate. There is no slug in this particular iron. The auction listings include an estimated value, and for this particular iron, that value is $5,000 to $10,000. The actual price that the item sold for is... Here is another older Germanic iron. This is also from the 17th century, although there is no date. Generally similar construction, it has a wrought base, it has a simple lift door, although it's a little more elaborate, and it lists, and again, there is no slug. But what I want to call your attention to 
is the top piece here, and this has an, an Adam and Eve motif here. Um, many of the irons of this period do have biblical themes, and included in the front is what in the United States we call the North Wind design. It's a, it's a blowing uh, face figure here. Um, I'm sure they didn't use the North Wind term back then. Perhaps this is a stand-in for the devil. This is a magnificent iron. Uh, the posted value is fifteen to twenty-five thousand dollars. Let's see what this sells for. This is 18th century with wrought parts. Um, it has a date in the little heart pattern in the middle. It says 1749. On the other side it says AM and RI. I'm going to guess that this is a wedding gift and that those initials go to the two people about to be married. The handle is bone and ebony and it is absolutely gorgeous. There is, as is typical for the irons of this period, a rather simple latch and a gate that opens up. Again, there is no slug. The estimated value of this in the auction book is five thousand to ten thousand dollars. This is another 18th century Germanic iron. I'm going to say late 18th century, so late 1700s here rather than the early 1700s we've seen before. Uh, the parts here are not wrought. They're mostly cast in brass. There is in the back a rather heavy brass door. Opens up. Again, there is no slug. And on the top of the box there is a, another panel of a different metal that's been inset into this with various screws to lock that in place. And I think the, the design here is to reflect the Garden of Eden. And we have this nice serpent along the top here. Very exquisite piece. Um, I think this is the original ebony handle. And the value posted in the auction book for this iron is ten to $20,000. Another 18th century Germanic iron. This is made in Nuremberg and the Nuremberg crafted irons is always something that's especially relished by collectors. Uh, this is all brass, a very heavy brass box. In the top is a design that shows uh, a couple walking in the woods, very lavishly dressed, so this is not Adam and Eve. On the back is a elk latch that you lift to swing the gate on a hinge. This is a very pretty piece. The value estimated at $5,000 to $10,000. This is another German iron. Uh, late 1700s, early 1800s, there is no years or initials. We're not sure exactly. It is made of iron, but it would be an iron alloy. It's got a a sort of a zinc kind of appearance to it. It's beautifully made. It has an inscribed floral design around the edges. It's got a, a little lip on the, on the front. It has a lift gate on the back. And the handle is again a snake design. Uh, nicely done, laid out. It's also small, four and three eighths inches. And knowing that we, we know that the smaller irons are often more sought after, you might not be surprised that the uh, estimated value on this is $10,000 to $20,000. This is Danish. I guess it's still Germanic, but uh, we do ascribe this to modern day Denmark. Um, again, 18th century, late 1700s, cast brass. And let me show you the back first of all. Uh, there's a I'm going to say a tulipy design here that opens and I can, uh, I'm going to lift the gate and show you that this does have the slug. Reminder that we are talking about the slug irons today. Put that back in. Let me leave that off and we'll just take a look at the design here. Again, there's a panel here that's been uh, screwed into the top here. There are two snakes on this panel. There's also a third snake in bronze which is wrapped around this, this urn or goblet. So three snakes all together, these rather stylized posts, 
an original wood handle, a absolutely magnificent piece with a value of $10,000 to $20,000. This is another 18th century Danish iron, very typical Danish. It has the rounded back. It also has this nice, very ornamented cutout lift gate here. There is an original slug in here. This is all iron and it comes with the original trivet. And I say original trivet because these make a, a very close fit and the wood and brass work on the handle here and here are similar. Very pretty piece. Again, iron, not the brass or the other mixed metals which probably lower the price value a bit. The value posted here is $2,000 to $5,000. And here is another iron that is listed as being Danish. I'm not absolutely sure on that, but I'm no specialist on this at all. It is brass. It has a lift gate with a peacock structure here. There also is a peahen design in the top. However, I want you to notice that the screws here are just very simple screws and they're simple screws on a relatively simple handle, which leads me, again, a non-specialist, to think that this is probably from the 19th century. The prices listed in the auction book are value $6,000 to $12,000, and I'm thinking it might go for a little lower than that, but let's see. This is an Italian iron. The dates are uncertain. I'm going to say 17th century. It is largely wrought, a uh, wood handle. It has an ornamented little spring here. You can turn to the side to open up the gate. There is no slug in here. In the front here, and let me just take a look at the posts here. The back two posts are called a saddle. The two posts then merging to a single post that goes to the handle with a single post in the front. Again, nicely wroughtly ornamented here. And also incorporated into this is a, again, a snake design. Very interesting piece, um, all wrought. And the value posted here is $2,000 to $5,000. And frankly, I would half expect it to go for more than that. There's always something special about the French irons. This is 18th century French. There are four posts on the back. There are three posts on the front. The, um, the top is screwed in to the bottom of the box. And I will open up the latch here. And when I open up the latch, there's a spring within the gate. And the gate will open right up for me. There is a slug in here as well. Let's get that closed back. Oh, such a beautiful iron. Value, fifteen to thirty thousand dollars. This is a lavish 18th century Swedish iron. Um, it is a copper brass alloy of some kind. The top has a crown design. The posts are regal feminine figures um, with a rather simple lift here, no slug, dated 1772, value four to eight thousand dollars. Okay, this is a Scottish iron and a very unusual Scottish iron. It does have the trivet, but let me tell you that this trivet, I'm pretty sure, is not original to the iron. The box is made of steel. The handle is a single post. I unlatch the handle here, and then I rotate the handle by 90 degrees, and that lifts this off. Inside the box, we have the original slug. All of this quite unusual. Uh, I've never seen another Scottish iron like this. The 
value posted is one to three thousand dollars. I know there's a lot of collectors of these Scottish irons and I can imagine that this might go for more. It's been an absolute delight to see these and actually have these irons in my hands and appreciate them for the moment and show them to you. These come from one of the great collections in iron collecting history and these irons will shortly be going into some other great collections. But in the meantime, they're ours.